The learning community is a building that is specifically built for um, around about 200, 220 students. So if we're actually looking at, at the building, um, they're then split into two neighbourhoods, um, which therefore allows students, smaller numbers of students to operate independently and interdependently within, within the actual physical building. We've structured our learning communities as year seven to 10. Um, the reason for that is to actually get a cross section of students within each of the learning communities. So you don't just have a very you know, mature, calm year 10 learning community whilst you know, at the developmental stages at year seven and eight, you might have students that are a little bit more exuberant. Um, what we've tried to do is to actually spread that um, across the four learning communities so that um, it allows, it allows um, I suppose, modelling of um, behaviour. It allows a little bit of peer support, if you like, from the older students with the younger students. Well, in the old school, I found that you didn't really know all the year levels. You kind of knew the ones in your class and maybe the other year level class that's in your community, but with this new community set out, we can, you know the younger like, students and you can get along with them and the, you know more teachers too. Team teaching is extremely beneficial. Um, it, it's beneficial for the teacher, but it's certainly more beneficial for the students. I mean, every every student, you know, has has their strengths and weaknesses with things that they under, they, you know, the things that they understand the way that they work. But being teaching in a team really allows students to be able to, I suppose, extract the best things from all the from their different teachers. Uh, it allows the teachers to be able to you know, play off one another or work off one another and play to their strengths. Students feel more comfortable with their teachers as opposed to like just these people that turn up and then disappear. They're sort of always there and it makes it a lot easier to like recognise them and to be able to see them as someone to help you to learn, not as someone who's making you do stuff that you don't want to do. My teaching now is looking at, I suppose, what we call differentiation. So I need to look at where my students are in terms of um, high, medium, low, um, and I need to use, be able to use data um, to inform my teaching, whereas before it might have been an inherent thing, I know that I've got high, medium, or low students in my class, um, but now it's then being able to say, all right, how am I actually going to meet the needs of those three levels, if you like, with, within my class or within the group of students that I teach. I like the style of learning. It just makes it easier for everyone to get the best education, other than, you know, some struggling to keep up and then others going ahead. It's sort of everyone can keep up, and if they can, and if they want to, they can go ahead. But nobody's left behind. Students now have a great understanding about why they're doing different activities in their classroom, and that's as a result of teachers you know, explaining you know, learning intentions and, and why it is that we're learning different things. Uh, but certainly a greater amount of um, student input and student choice about how they might demonstrate their learning. All in all, we're all there. We're all either learning or teaching, and it's just a really pleasant um, and cooperative and calm, focused learning environment.